David Kelly, President and CEO of Chicana Copper. Chicana Copper has made an important copper gold silver discovery in Peru. It's in the Ancash province. It's in an active mining district. The discovery dates back to 2017 when we started drilling these high-grade outcropping tourmaline breccia pipes. But it's progressed now to the south side of the of the project area. We've quadrupled the land position since we started. We now have uh, control over 4,200 hectares in this district and we're exploring the uh the newly permitted southern half of the project it has more high-grade breccia pipes but it also has uh, what we believe to be the intrusive center that's driving the entire district we're in the middle of drilling that right now and we also have a high sulfidation epithermal target to drill so it's very exciting time for us Matt. It, it is and that's why we're talking and i hope to talk to you more regularly because um i, I think you've come off the back of a kind of ca- cash constrained uh period where we're, we're talking about the theory of you know what and the potential of what could be but you're you've just announced two holes come out not too shabby tell us about them yeah, no, we're super excited about that because, uh, you know, we have three targets to test in this round of drilling, the high-grade breccia, uh, the porphyry target, and then the high-sulfidation epithermal target. And we put two shallow holes uh, to test the grade of the Estremadoro breccia pipe. It's another one of these outcropping, very strongly mineralized at surface breccia pipes. Uh, it's not rocket science. You know it's mineralized at surface. We know that these breccias, from all the drilling we've done, we know that they're vertically extensive uh, breccia pipes. And, uh, in fact, we've never seen the bottom one on the north side. Uh, we're super interested in this one in particular because it's the closest outcropping or mapped breccia to the mega gold porphyry target. So we're very curious to see, uh, what the class are like in this breccia, what the grades are like. And, uh, yes, we did hit great grades, 1% copper, 0.6 grams gold, and uh, 26 grams silver across a part of the breccia. We drilled it in the other direction and got uh, similar grades. Uh, but importantly for me, it's the first time we've ever seen uh, the mineral boronite in, intergrown with chalcopyrite. And the significance of boronite versus chalcopyrite, they're both you know, uh, common ore minerals for the copper supply. But boronite has uh, 64% copper in uh, and chalcopyrite has 34%. So it's about double the amount of copper in that mineral. So it's a great sign to see that. We don't know if it has something to do with the fact that we're close to our porphyry target or what it really means, but it's great to see from a grade standpoint. And as you mentioned, you know, the, we, we get good grades with the precious metals, uh, 0.6. The co- copper equivalent of what we just drilled is 1.65% copper equivalent. So a little bit of gold and some silver adds a lot to the value of this mineralization. Well, it, it does. You say it's 1.65% a copper uh, equivalent and 25 uh, gold equivalent for, for people who know gold a little bit better. So in, so in terms of the economics, the, 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 um, the, the mix of gold and copper and silver, um, that's the exciting bit here, I, I, I think. Um, how do you then move this thing forward? You're waiting for a third drill results to come through. When's that gonna? When are we gonna see that? Well, we, you know, we got the first drill results out with just over four weeks of the start of drilling, which I think that sets a record in my book. I mean, that tells you what uh, how hard our team is working at site and and also our vendors in the laboratory and that type of thing. Uh, you know, the second batch of samples just went into the lab, so I, you know, two to three weeks. Uh, uh, time frame. Ironically, the the results were a little bit delayed in this last time because we had 13 copper assays that were over limit and had to be reassayed. So that's always a good problem to have. Uh, but yeah, we I, I would expect you know steady flow of information. I'm happy to get on and do these regular updates with you because I think it's important. We're seeing some great rocks. We're seeing big system alteration at in, in the mega gold drilling to date. Obviously, we don't know anything about the grades, uh, but we're seeing the right minerals. We've seen chalcopyrite and molybdenite we have no idea if we're if there's gold in, in the mineralization that we're drilling uh but it's it's still early days we just you know we're just on the third hole out of uh six that were originally planned but we are working now to expand the drilling uh based on what we're seeing we're super excited uh, we, you know, Goldfields is excited with uh, the results we've gotten to date. So uh, we're going to expand the drill program and keep drilling down there because the big system alteration that we're seeing is very encouraging. Let's tell me about the assay component because some people forget focus on the drilling, but the, yeah, the assay bit is the, the that does the talking. And sometimes you've got to work out how you assay these 
uh, or bodies, you know, because the copper comes in different forms. So, you know, and some companies have to, you know, go off and do like fire screen assays um, compared to the, you know, you know re- regular assays. So, what what are, what are you working out there in terms of um, what you're going to need to do going forward? And will it delay you? Will it cost any more? Uh, it doesn't really. I mean, we've always done multi element uh, ICP MS for the broad geochemical scan. You know, that gives you. 50 plus elements to work with all the all the base metals uh all the precious metals all the pathfinder elements that are important in uh mineral systems the zoning of elements we talked a lot about the the manganese uh halo that we have surrounding our porphyry targets so elements like that are important even though they're not part of the economic story they're certainly part of the geologic story and then uh, gold is always done by fire assay we we choose a fire assay method that has a 50 gram sample instead of 30 it's a bigger sample it it helps minimize any kind of nugget effect that you might have and then there's over limit assays for anything that's above the reportable limit for all of the important metals of interest and we, and we do that as well so what's exciting me about this system matt is the fact that we've always seen lots of precious metals with the copper copper gold systems are very common but we also see significant molybdenum mineralization uh especially deep in the breaches we're already seeing molybdenite in the holes we're drilling at mega gold so this is telling us we've got a copper gold molybdenum uh, system, and those are actually fairly rare. If you plot a ternary diagram of copper gold and, and uh, molybdenum and put all the global copper deposits on it, you get two trends. You get copper gold deposits and you get copper molybdenum deposits. There's a few that sit in the middle of that, and one of them that comes to mind, one of the greatest examples is the Bingham deposit in Utah. It kind of sits right in the middle of that ternary diagram. And so it, it, it speaks to the somewhat unique character of the of the intrusive rocks that generate these kind of systems. They tend to be more alkalic systems. We don't know that uh, we have alkalic rocks yet, but we still haven't seen that uh, smoking gun intrusion that's driving this. So just the geochemical association is interesting, and, and all three of those metals can be very important economically, as you know. Okay, so exciting times on the job, but and, and the assay seem to be you know de- delivering on. We'll wait to see some regular updates from you. Yep. On the on the, on the money side of things, um, just remind me, how many meters are we talking about drilling going forward? Uh, the original plan was 3,000 meters. We got okay. the Estremadoro Breccia drilling done for 147 meters, which I was thrilled. We got we got all the information we needed at this point, shallow intercept, high grade, good, let's move on. Uh, we had planned 200 meters for that, so we immediately started Mega Gold with an extra 50 meters. But we're also uh, in, in exercising warrants from the first tranche of our financing. That's giving us additional capital. And we just had a meeting this morning with Goldfields to talk about additional drilling and expanding the drill program. So, uh, you know, I we, we've got a minimum of 3,000 meters, but we'll push that up. And, and I want to do more drilling in Mega Gold because I'm excited about what I'm seeing. Okay, you're excited. Everyone's Goldfields excited. Um, so I want to talk to you about the next thing, which is you obviously, and I referred to it earlier in terms of being a cash constraint for a long period of time and the equities market's been off for three years, et cetera. You know, Rick Rawls coming to this thing, people got a little bit excited about the potential because he's a, he's a guy that talks about scale. He's only investing something with scale. Yet, if I'm looking at the kind of trading liquidity here, it's significantly increased. Do you think you're going to rotate out um, a bunch of like maybe longstanding uh, sh- shareholders, uh, what would you say to them? Would you say, you know, stick with us, give us a chance? Or do you say, well, actually, it's probably a good thing it's going to freshen up that register? Yeah, I think a little bit of both is happening uh, now. We certainly have seen a lot of new investors come into the story. And, and you know, a lot of those came in at the end of uh, 2023 when we were trading at four cents, uh, three cents, three and a half cents, I think was our low. Uh, so, you know, we're already sitting, they're already sitting on very nice gains. I think we're up a hundred and, you know, 30% uh, in the last six months or something like that. But we do have a lot of shareholders, a lot of very loyal and long-term uh, shareholders that have invested at much higher prices, of course, 50 cents, 40 cent financings, including Goldfields. You know, Goldfields has put in over, over $12 million, uh, you know, since 2018 at you know much higher prices, but they're doing it because they believe in 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 the project. Um, so you know, I I certainly hope that our share the longer term shareholders uh, stick with us. Um, you know, many of those have averaged down. A big part of our uh, recent financing did include existing shareholders, so they see you know the the value of that. And the best way to minimize dilution 
uh, to yourself is to is to participate in the financing. The management certainly did that. Uh, management is uh, all management is exercising their their warrants in this exercise uh, with this warrant exercise uh, period that we're going through now. So it's a very good sign to see the quality of the uh, shareholders. Rick Rule just put out his pre conference uh, video that came out yesterday where he interviewed me and he talks uh, extensively about what he likes about the company, the fact that he personally vetted all the companies that attend uh, his uh, his uh, resource investment conference in Boca Raton that's coming up July 7th through the 11th. So I encourage people to to read that or to listen to that uh, video and, and see why Rick is a shareholder and what he likes about us. Great, and we'll, we'll put a link to that in the in the article accompanying this this conversation. We'll let, I appreciate the update, and I also appreciate the offer of seeing you a bit more regularly. Uh, we'll take you up on that. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much, Pat. You too.